All right, we're here with Charlie from Natural Selection. Uh, we are looking at a not really a total conversion mod. We are talking about a full indie game right here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, just a little bit, quick spot on about your game right now? Sure, I'd love to. Um, well, Half Life One was the we, Natural Selection was a mod for Half Life One yeah. back in 2002. So, which I wrote like back then, and I was a professional developer that went into the mod scene. Really wanted to make a game that combined RTS and FPS together. Right. And at that time, the Half Life One modding scene was just blowing up. And I thought this is a great way to get this concept out to as many people as possible. Right. So then that became somewhat popular, and then I was I got hooked, and I wanted to make a sequel. And of course, this time I'm like out of money. I need to like make a game that I can sell, so I can continue doing it forever. Started the company and started getting funding, and yeah. now here we are as a commercial standalone non-mod sequel to Natural right. Selection. Right. So Natural Selection, we're talking about a game that features. It's a first-person shooter, sort. Of. Yep. It features two types sort of, of teams, yep. and it also features a, a single player who runs the, the strategy portion of the yep. game. How does that work? How do you do go from strategy into this whole first-person team-based thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a delicate balance. Uh, the commander gives orders to other players on the team, so he's got a top-down view. Mm -hmm. So he's giving orders, he's dropping structures. Now he can't. It's not like StarCraft where the commander can do everything. And you don't want a game. We don't want a game that that the commander plays one game and that everyone else plays a different game. You want them to be together. It's a right. multiplayer game. So the commander drops structures, but all the players on the ground have to build the structures. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, the commander will. So the commander is making strategic choices and spending the team's money, but the players on the ground have to work together, or else it's, it's not going to work. Okay. So he'll expand across the map, build an extractor, which is like a way to get resources, mm -hmm. and the marines on the ground have to build it, and then they have to defend it. If it stops working. They don't get resources. They can't get their unlocks for their weapons, and they can't, you know, sure. they can't use resources to buy stuff. Yep. So those, that's how those two sides work together. So if we have somebody out there, say, all, right now working on a modification for Half-Life or Quake or whatever the game may be, yeah. what would be the process that you suggest that they go through in order to say, turn around and say, okay, I'm ready for developing my own game? I know you went through a lot of trouble. Everyone goes through yeah. the trouble. Is, do you have any suggestions for people? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, first of all, I would say make your mod the smallest possible mod you can make. Like, make something that's unique, and what they say in like startups is like the minimum viable product. Like, figure out, you want to make a really popular mod first, like a really awesome mod that people get excited about. That's the hard, that's the hard part. So make something really small, something you can ship relatively quickly. You don't want to be, don't be like me and spend years on the sequel. Right. Like you want to set up your mod where you want to, like the NS1 actually only took 18 months, start yeah. to finish. Oh. I mean, I, I continued working on it after that, but we released after 18 months. That was great. We took a much longer process than I would have liked to get the sequel done. Right. So I would say do something small, do it fast, strip out everything that is not really critical for your idea, make something unique so people get really excited about it, and build it up as big as possible, get as many people interested in it as yeah. possible, and that will help you. The doors will start opening for you for funding. You can crowdsource you know, your money if you need to because you have fans. Yeah. You can, I mean, Kickstarter has really helped that a lot now. You can actually do something right. now. I would also say when you start building a commercial sequel, if you've made a great mod and you want to make a commercial sequel, figure out a way to make money off your sequel as soon as possible. Okay. Like, not years, like make money that first day. Like, how can you make money today? Because when you start like doing pre-sales, selling t-shirts, uh, asking like the Kickstarter thing, all yeah. those things are really helpful for getting people, because okay. you, need, you need the money to start yep. coming in. Yeah. And you'll learn how to make money, and unfortunately, or fortunately, making money is really important for running a team. Right. It's a, I mean, that we would have taken, we would have been out probably a couple years ago, a year or two ago, if we had a lot more money earlier. Okay. So. Well, I don't know if this has helped you or hurt you, but right now you can go in and uh, anybody can go out there and make maps for this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, so, we, it, uh, two of the maps that are shipping with the game are from the community. Exactly. So, so, so does is that something that actually helps you to open it up to the community? Because obviously, you have a t oh, yeah. tight knit team that actually do the development, yeah. but then you open it up to the community and maybe that actually furthers you quicker? Uh, we'd be dead without our community maps, right. among other things. Uh, we, we were funded by the community. We did over a million dollars in pre-orders, yeah. which like, that's like literally, we would have been out of business if we didn't do that. We have two shipping maps in the game from the community. Um, all of our, I think our entire level design team came from our community. Two of our five programmers came from the community. We have the spectator mod we just added to the game, which is a community mod, which we then integrated in. 
all of our all of our QA team, our playtest team, they're they're also why this game is relatively bug free. Right. They're also they came from the community. They work like six seven hours a day. Wow. They're running this booth for us. <laughs> like they were here like two days before I got here, yeah. or one day before I got here, two days before the rest of the dev team. They've been running this whole thing, along with Hugh, who's on our dev team. But so we just rely on them for everything because yeah. we have to. All right. I mean, we it's also it's in our blood. We yeah. would like to do it, yeah. but also we have to. All right. So somebody out there is all interested to find out more. They want to see, maybe even get their hands on something. I don't know if that's possible. What yeah. do they do? So if you pre-order it before Tuesday from naturalselection2.com, you can jump in the beta. Uh, we're going to be on Steam on Tuesday for pre-orders. After that, I think we're going to shut the beta down until we launch. But um, so you might want to do it before Tuesday. Um, but yeah, we'll be, we'll be out on Steam before you know it. Wonderful. So you can come, come check out our forums at unknownworlds.com. Very active mapping forums, like tutorials on our level editor, cinematic tool, all that stuff. So, okay. yeah, get involved. All right, thank yeah. you very much, Charlie. Thank you. All right, and uh, that's it. Foilman from PAX, thanks.